Hey guys and girls, and welcome to a brand new pickup video. Okay, well, it's been quite a while since the last pickup video. Um, as you can probably imagine, I've been quite conservative with my money over the last few months, but you know, over the course of um, that time, um, I have picked up quite a few, uh, quite a few goodies here and there. So uh, let's not delay. Let's have a quick, quick look at them. Got ourselves a. Um, a nice little variety today so let's uh, let's get started uh, first one is a DS game and that is Namco Museum DS um, this was a CEX pickup I believe it was uh, 10 pounds let me just quickly because um, I normally keep the uh, there we go yeah 10 pounds uh, for that it comes from cartridge obviously and the uh, instruction manual very nice instruction manual as well yeah, I saw this for a tenner in CES and I was like, ooh, I don't have this. This looks reasonable. I mean, it's got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games technically. And, of course, you've got Pac-Man Versus in it as well. Pretty much the only multiplayer-only game on there. But, yeah, £10 for this. I thought it was I thought it was all right, you know, and it plays quite well. Um, one thing you can actually do with it is I don't think my DS is nearby, but you can... Um, turn the DS around to actually play the games at their um, uh, correct arcade aspect ratio but it's kind of weird playing with the DS sideways and you've got like the D-pad like there and kind of holding the thumbs um, and you're pushing the buttons with this thumb or perhaps maybe the other way around it sort of depends on um, uh, how you hold your um, your DS sideways <laughs> but yeah Namco Museum DS it's a lot of fun that is it's not too bad and um, and the games seem um, you know arcade perfect which you know for the age of them and the um the power of the ds i would imagine it uh, it would be right next up another classic game this one's for the playstation and that is simply the original worms now i have not played this for a long time and i think i got this for yeah i got this for three quid um not you know not not a bad price for this if you ask me um yeah, it's been um, it's been a long time since I played the original Worms, and um, I've been playing a lot of Worms Armageddon lately. Not Armageddon, uh, Worms Revolution, I think it is um, on Steam anyway. Yeah, I think it is Worms Revolution actually. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of that over the last uh, couple of months or so. And uh, going back to this, it's um, wow, it's a, it's a little difficult to readjust um, on on this because. One thing you can do in a lot of the uh, later Worms games is look around the map easily enough. With this you kind of still can, but you've got to kind of use either like the teleport or the airstrike to have a quick look around. And uh, aiming is, um, you've really got to use your noggin uh, as far as aiming is concerned on Worms. But you know, it is what it is, you know, the games they do, um, they do advance. So when you go back to the absolute uh, original um, uh, game and you kind of realise, you know, how how simplistic but at the same time in comparison to all the newer games how kind of hard they are because of the lack of um, uh, special features or additional weapons and stuff like that that was uh, obviously included in later games but yeah Worms absolute classic I've been meaning to get hold of this for a long time so I'm quite glad I picked that up in reasonably good condition for three quid you know and it's not a platinum version or anything like that you know so yeah I'm quite pleased with that right Next up, we've got ourselves a couple of Switch games. Um, first one, I bought this ages ago. I've made tons of Twitter posts about it, posted like um, a few videos and what have you, but it's not been featured as part of um, uh, the pickups. At least I don't think they are. At least I hope they haven't. Oh, this one anyway. Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been, um, yeah, definitely been playing a lot of this. Um, a hell of a lot. Actually, no, it's been like... Um, over the last few weeks and I have kind of stopped playing it now because I'm slowly uh, reaching a point where I'm kind of uh, running out of things to do uh, sort of thing I mean to, to me Animal Crossing New Horizons is like several steps back from um, a New Leaf New Leaf I found was quite innovative uh, especially compared to like a uh, Wild World which was the last Animal Crossing game I played before New Leaf. I mean, I completely skipped over um, Let's Go to the City, aka City Folk. So, uh, yeah, to go from New Leaf with like its mini town centre and everything else, all of its shops and what have you, to 
New Horizons with this effective, well, nothing in comparison. You know, there's, this is pretty much, you know, bare bones in compar comparison to New Leaf. Um, yeah, it's just a case of, you know, doing, you know, getting everything set up as you would do on an uninhabited island and um, just sort of making the island your own, trying to make, a, you know, trying to get a couple of projects um, done and what have you. I mean, one of my main projects on this was to uh, <laughs> do a funny little theme park called uh, Disneyland. And uh, yeah, I've almost got that finished. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could probably upgrade it in the future when more upgrades happen to the game. But for the time being, I've just kind of like found myself playing this off and on um, instead of as regular as as I used to. But yeah, it's, it's still a fun game, but it's got a lot of catching up to do. All right, next up, uh, this is a physical version of a download game, which I didn't actually know existed until about a week or so ago. And that's Tetris 99. <laughs> I did that. Uh, this was actually the first game I downloaded onto my Switch. In fact, I probably made a point of mentioning that anyway. But yeah, uh, but I didn't really download much else after the fact. But yeah, Tetris 99. I mean, it comes with the offline modes. Um, it's got marathon and CPU battle, which is great. And of course, it's um, received a free update for the local arena and the 2P share battle. And of course, obviously, you can play it online. But just to have, you know, the um, uh, the physical version in a nice cartridge as well. And it was 12 quid, which is, if I remember rightly, it's a little bit more expensive than if you were to download the additional um, uh, modes and what have you for the um, download version. But just to have a nice cartridge, you know, I'm always going to want to have a cartridge over digital. If, I, if it, you know, the game is digital only, I'm not really going to complain about that because, you know, sometimes, you know, if, if a game receives, like, regular updates, for example, Minecraft, uh, having it digital is most probably a better idea than rather than having it as a physical, um, uh, a physical game because, oh boy, sort of like with worms in a way, you know, you, you're stuck with a um, very simple bare bones version on the disc my, while you've got all the updates on your hard disk. So, uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't think Tetris 99 is going to be upgraded all that much with the exception of like the additional um, uh, themes that they, uh, they have for it, especially during the uh, themed events where you got to collect the um, uh, the points and then you can um, get your th free themes. But yeah, Tetris 99, it's Tetris, it's a lot of fun. Tetris Battle Royale, you know, it's, it's fun. I, I play it every once in a while, so um, yeah, not too bad. Alright, next up we've got ourselves a couple of Master System games. First one, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Now, my local CEX, they had a, um, a couple, or well, they had a handful of uh, Master System games. And I was sort of looking at them, thinking, hmm, meh, meh, yeah, sort of um and about what ones I wanted to have. So, one of the first ones I picked up was uh, Moonwalker. And uh, I've played the, uh, the Mega Drive version. And I've now played this version, so I can compare the two. Um, I, I found that this version is slightly more difficult than the Mega Drive version, because uh, you know, in the Mega Drive version, when uh, Michael Jackson kicks, he um, kicks out pixie dust, magic stars, whatever, and uh, that makes for a pretty good range attack. But on the Master System version, um, yeah, Michael Jackson just kicks and punches. No magic fairy dust, pixie dust, magic stars, or anything like that. He, he does just a straightforward kick and punch. Uh, you can pick up a power up which allows him to uh, throw his hat, but other than that, yeah. And uh, he doesn't have bubbles either in this version, so you've got to find all of the kids by yourself. And they're, from what I can tell, all hidden behind doors, but they're not behind but all of the doors. You know, some of the doors are blank. Um, well, empty, nothing behind the doors, and behind some of the other doors that don't have children in are enemies in. And uh, the enemies, you can't attack them the minute, that the second they come through the door, uh, they will actually get a cheap shot on you and get you a health point down, and that's just like, really? Can't even defend myself against these guys. But on the whole, you know, it's still a lot of fun game, you know, it's pretty much uh, comparable to the Mega Drive version. Obviously, neither version is comparable to the arcade, but... You know, it's it's good for what it is. You know, that's a uh, Moonwalker and uh, second Master System game. Let's just check to make sure that was still running. <laughs> second Master System game, which I'm quite glad I got this off. Robocop versus a Terminator. Now I know 
I could get the Mega Drive versions of both of these games. But I don't know, just to have the Master System version is something a little bit more special and uh, I was quite surprised about this game. I mean this game plays really well and I do like the um, I do like the cartridge and both of these uh, Master System games were in pretty good condition so it was definitely well worth the price. I think they were both 12 quid each. Um, I don't have the... Um, it seems like I don't have the, the labels for this. No, no, I don't have the price label yet, but I think they were both about 12 quid each, which, you know, as far as I'm concerned, pretty good running for um, for Master System games. But yeah, this, this game is very visceral. It's very bloody. I mean, when you shoot any given enemy, they just explode into a pool of blood, and I'm just like, wow, that's even bloodier than Mortal Kombat, and you don't need a cheat, uh, blood code for it. Slightly less bloodier than Mortal Kombat, maybe, but then, then again, maybe, maybe it is because you know, your enemies they just evaporate, you know, explode into blood, you know, just like that. Nothing, you, you didn't really get that in such graphic detail on Mortal Kombat. So, yeah, I, I, I don't I quite like this actually. Um, I haven't got too far in it, but I, it, you know, I've, I've gotten to a point where I can play it somewhat competently enough, so yeah, I'm actually quite looking forward to uh, playing that properly now. Um, final game is another Switch game, and it's, um, yeah, you guys ever get that feeling where you buy a game that you're looking forward to, you play it and you realise, it's not as good as I kind of hoped it would be. Yeah, me too. Um, so yeah, this one is a limited run edition actually, and that is Streets of Rage 4. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people out there that really do like this game, but hear me out here, right? Okay, so this is the um, special uh, standard uh, collector's edition uh, of Streets of Rage 4. As you can see, it comes with the, uh, uh, the Mega Drive clam case, and it comes with a few other bits and pieces on it as well. There we go. It's quite difficult to open, actually. You can see it comes with a, a CD soundtrack, which is pretty neat. Uh, the standard limited run... Uh, collector's card and it's got this really nice poster here I'm hoping I can get this all in frame it's uh, I think it's a data east type um, uh, poster actually because it's got quite a few uh, well not so much data east I suppose I think it's got quite a few uh, of the games on the uh, on the side there I think I say data is because of uh, River City Girls on there so um, I'm really hoping I'm kind of saying the right company actually when I say Data East. I'm probably completely wrong, but never mind, eh? Um, so yeah, it comes obviously with the uh, the game normally, okay? And uh, the, it's actually got an instruction manual. How about that? And obviously cartridge. You know, the instruction manual is quite nice. Reversible cover, so which you can have bare knuckle four on it. And the car uh, cartridge. Uh, the manual is actually pretty good. It's in it's in colour. Which is, you know, even more surprising considering the lack of manuals in games these days. And also comes with this really nice steel book as well. And part of the Mega Drive case just fell out. I think I know why that is actually now that I realise it. Part of the case just came out. What I think actually Limited Run have done here. Uh, they've just created the clamshells in one complete run. And what they planned on doing after that because they did the uh, PS4 version as well I don't know if they've done Xbox 360 I doubt it I think yeah the PS4 box just fits in there as well so uh, I just grabbed any old one. Oh look worms <laughs> but obviously uh, the last thing that they included in this as well was a nice little tin book as well which is a uh, quite nice nice little tin case nice little colour tin case Streets of Rage 4 on the side now obviously that's not reversible so but yeah, anyway, on to why I feel regret buying um, this. Um, I was looking forward to Streets of Rage 4 as much as everybody else was. And, um, excuse me. And I was watching uh, the trailers and what have you, the sneaky peeks and what have you. And I was like, okay, yeah, it's got the uh, the cartoon effect. You know, I can deal with that. You know, a lot of um, a lot of side-scrolling... Uh, um, side-scrolling beat-em-up games are kind of like already have that. Um, visual effect or they're heading that way anyway so yeah I'm, you know as long as the game plays well I'm up for it and then I saw some proper gameplay footage and I noticed that Streets of Rage 4 plays very similarly to Streets of Rage 2 
Now, I do not like Streets of Rage 2. I actually think it's the worst, the weakest. Um, well, no, I'm not going to roll, but I'm not going to, you know, take back worst. You know, I do think it is the worst of the three games, four games now. Um, actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll go into that in just a second. So yeah, it played very similar to um, Streets of Rage 2, and I was like... Rrr. So uh, when it uh, came out uh, digitally, I sort of undenied about it. I thought, you know what, fuck it. I might be pleasantly surprised about Streets of Rage 4. So, you know, I downloaded it, I started playing, and my worst fear, it was... play. It does play just like Streets of Rage 2, and I was like, oh, for crying out loud. And uh, the more I just played Streets of Rage 4, the more I just got so angry with it. Because, I don't know, it seems to me that the game just hates you and takes every opportunity to attack you when there's no chance for you to defend yourself. At least in the previous Streets of Rage games, or at least from what I noticed, that didn't really seem to be as aggressive as Streets of Rage 4. So yeah, I don't consider Streets of Rage 4 any kind of improvement whatsoever, any kind of like... I just don't like Streets of Rage 4, but I understand that I'm in the minority both about Streets of Rage 4 and Streets of Rage 2, so yes, there we go. <laughs> so that's it for um, games themselves, and I've got myself, a and there goes my little table. I've got myself a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, systems actually, one's a brand new system, completely brand new, and one's something that was actually given to me actually because the previous owner no longer wanted it in fact they were just going to throw it out and that is it's quite heavy bastard actually Ugh! xbox 360 now now what you guys are thinking wow you got yourself the halo halo 3 limited edition um 360 actually guys no i haven't <laughs> see what this is the halo 360 is actually a replacement for my friend's old 360 this one uh, apparently according to her it you know the disk drive doesn't open anymore but i managed to get it to to a point where it would open from time to time uh, but yeah the, the machine itself still does work and you know i thought to myself you know it's quite nice to have um, a nice spare 360 because i might i don't know if i want to hack this or not so um i've heard this is quite good for hacking and i think this is just the 20 gigabyte hard drive which is fine with me anyway, because I've got a um, 125 hard drive and a 250 hard drive, which is actually in my um, regular 360 anyway. But yeah, uh, a, a free Xbox 360, you know, I'm definitely not uh, going to say no to that, especially when it was just sitting on top of their wheelie bin. Bloody heavy thing it is as well. Right, guys, uh, I've got one more thing left to show, and I'm actually really, really pleased about this. It's been a long time coming, this one. Been, been like a couple of years or so it certainly felt like it anyway and that is the zx spectrum next now i have think i have posted about this on on twitter a couple of times and i most definitely spammed the hell out of the kickstart uh, the kickstarter link um when it was first up i'm actually quite pleased about this i went for the uh, uh the pi accelerated version because i wanted like the best zx spectrum next and you know i'm actually quite pleased with this and it's a really it's such a very very sleek machine i mean just look at that just look how sexy that is and i'm assuming uh you can tell just ju judging by the look of it that they based it around the uh, uh the spectrum 1 to 8k just the ordinary uh 1 to 8k and it's really it's so nice it's just like hmm <laughs> It's got some really neat features, you know. It's got, um, got a nice little uh, uh, HDMI. It's got the uh, RGB VGA outward, uh, output, <coughs> which I was actually, which I'm actually quite disappointed about because uh, for RGB you can obviously um, plug that in via SCART, and I thought that was going to be like the same kind of output that you'd find on uh, uh, the previous Spectrums and what have you, but this is actually not the case at all it's a, um, a vga uh, socket and of course um you plug in a different like keyboard and mouse and what have you but one thing about this is really annoying actually is it doesn't have an on or off switch it's got the uh, reset button which is fine but you want to switch this thing on you literally just have to plug it in and then unplug it to switch it off which is kind of annoying really 
and uh, SD um, SD uh, uh, card slot with the um, the firmware on it, the system software, excuse me. And uh, you can uh, actually add a lot of things to the um, SD card. I mean, I've got myself a few um, uh, downloaded Spectrum games from World of Spectrum because. Let's be honest, you know, I am a very patient person. I can wait for um, ordinary games to load on a Spectrum via cassette. You know, I can just go away and do something else in the meantime. But sometimes it'll return an error and you'll have to load the game again. That's one of the disadvantages of loading from tape. Whereas if you load from a, um, a tape or disc image, there's a very good chance it's going to load straight away. You just got to make sure you load it in the right mode. And I've got a few classic, um, some of my favourite... Um, uh, childhood games on here. I've got the like of um, got Renegade on here, uh, the New Zealand story, which I've not been able to run properly on this yet. So I need to make sure I uh, get the right either tape or disc image, and then make sure I load it in the right mode. I haven't quite been able to get around to that yet. But there's quite a couple of uh, you know some demos on here, and a few um, and a couple of full games on here. Uh, they've got a brand new Dizzy game on this, and they've actually got a version of Castlevania on here, which is actually really impressive. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the Spectrum Next. Uh, it comes with a very, very nice user manual, very, very thick user manual. You know, it teaches you pretty much the ins and the outs of what you can do with your Spectrum. Um, <laughs> when, when actually, uh, I think back to when I was younger, I kind of wished I'd actually understood all of this, so it could be like a bedroom code and what have you. But of course, now that I'm older, I can actually read through this and go, hmm, I wonder if I can do any of this myself. Hey, you never know, weirder things have happened. And of course, I'm, I'm not going to show you this because it's just a power adapter. But yeah, it's actually a really, really, really nice computer. You know, it's presented in a really nice box. You know, they made sure they uh, they made sure they posted it secure as well. And, you know, I just I just really love the Spectrum Next. It's a very, very sexy and very sleek machine. You know, I do boot it up from time to time. So yeah, there we go guys, that's uh, everything I've collected over the last uh, few months or so. I honestly don't know when my next pickup video will be, it probably won't be this year, probably, I don't actually know, but I reckon, what we, we're in September now, probably won't see one now until the new year, let's just say after Christmas, well I'll probably do like a Christmas pickups video, but you never know, I may do one before then, but until then guys, take care of yourselves and thanks for watching.